Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I thank and praise God uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to stand and share from the Word. We serve a mighty God. He is all powerful, all sufficient, and there is nothing too hard for our God. The whole universe was created at his command and we serve a God who holds the whole world in his hand yeah, and that is why uh, we, we talk to a Heavenly Father and that is why we pray but when we pray you know sometimes we get the answer yes sometimes no and sometimes wait you now when we see in the Bible you know uh, every most of the saints of God you know they had to wait to receive their promises yeah, so when we look at the life of Joseph, at a very young age, God uh, helped him, you know, God uh, showed him a dream and he had a vision for his life. But in order to accomplish that vision, it, take a, it took a long time, you know, and Joseph had to go through different phases of his life for the fulfillment of that vision. Yeah, we see he was sold by his own brother, you know, he was put into cistern by his own brothers. He was uh, betrayed uh, by his brothers. He was betrayed by Potiphar's wife. He was put into prison. But through it all, this Almighty God, who gave him a vision, never left his sight. Yeah, because of which God lifted him, you know, to the position of prime minister in a foreign land. When we look at the life of Abraham, it's the same. You know, Abraham received the promise of God when he was 75 years of age. Yeah? And it took 25 long years for the fulfillment of that promise. He received his promise at the age of 100. Even Abraham had to go through you know, a period of trial, you know, a period of waiting to receive the promise. And it was not easy for Abraham. Yeah, sometimes it is difficult for human beings like us to wait. Yeah? And if we run ahead of God, we would end up with Hagar and Ishmael. Yeah, and that was the situation of Abraham. But God who promised was faithful to fulfill it. I mean, we serve a God who, who not only gives us promises, but who also fulfills it in his time. I mean, now look at the life of Job. You know, Job, there was a period of time in his life where he lost everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he had to go through a period of loneliness, a period through affliction, a period of, uh, you know, mockery. But, but look, you know, I'm just amazed at his life. When we read Job chapter 14, verse 14, he says, I will still wait upon the Lord for my renewal. Amen. How many of you can choose to wait upon the Lord this day? You know, there are many promises given to you and me by God. You know, but it depends on how we wait patiently and how we are faithful to this God. You know, when we read Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, but those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. You know why? Because God says uh, in Isaiah, those who wait upon the Lord, you know, there is a promise for them. And we read in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, it says, Do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I'll help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, what a blessed promise do we have, you know, from the creator of the whole universe. He says, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed for I am with you. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I mean, what a wonderful promise. I mean, if you believe in this promise, can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so those who wait upon the Lord, every saints who waited upon the Lord, they were never ashamed. Yeah, when we read in uh, Psalms chapter 34, verse 5, can you please read it for me? Those who look to Him are radiant, their faces are never covered with shame. Mm -hmm. It says, those who look to Him are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. Mm -hmm. Amen. And one of the men, you know, who was after God's own heart was David. Yeah. And David, you know, after experiencing the faithfulness of God, he says, those who look to him, their faces are radiant and he will never let them to be ashamed. You know, David, you know, when we look at the life of David, David had to wait upon the Lord. Yeah. See, 
when we see it took uh, it took a great you know it took a decade of years you know for him to become the king of israel you know since the time samuel the prophet anointed him when we look at the life of david you know and when we look at the life of saul we see saul uh, you know he rejected god but david sought the lord saul sought the throne but david he sought the presence of the lord and when he sought the presence of lord and when he learned to wait patiently unto god you know we see the same david you know after going through a phase of uh, rejection and affliction and loneliness bitterness pain and sorrow we see this same david saying in psalms 40 verse 1 to 3 can you please read it i waited patiently for the so lord he says i waited patiently for the lord he turned to me and heard my cry he turned to me and heard my cry he lifted me out of the slimy pit he lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and mire out of the mud and mire he set my feet on a rock he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand and gave me a firm place to stand amen so he says you know that he god lifted him out of the mire pit which means he was he was in the pit of depression he was in the pit of rejection he was in the pit of affliction and there were times in his life when he had to face death you know he faced death face to face you know but through it all this almighty god who called him with whom he had an intimacy never left his side amen and because of which today you know he was able to say that god gave me a firm place to stand amen see now during this period of waiting let me tell you dear children of god that we will have to face challenges yeah we will have to face challenges but let me tell you during this period you know of facing challenges when you if you would choose to pray your prayers will never go unanswered because we serve a god who is prayer listening and prayer answering god he is faithful he is faithful god and he is always he is always you know with us as he has promised you know he says that i will be with you i will never leave you nor forsake you i will strengthen you and i will uphold you with my righteous right hand amen so can you choose to cling on to this promises even when you don't see things happening but would you please choose to say that even when i don't see i know you're working even when i don't feel i know that you're working Amen. Amen. And then, you know, I I I want to share a few things that God was talking to me and teaching me, you know, through these days. When we pray this waiting period or uh let me put it like this, you know, sometimes why is the delay? You know, why is the delay to our prayers? So, I want to share five points. And the first thing, you know, why is there delay or uh, there are second conditions, you know, how we ought to pray. When we pray, First we have to always pray in the name of Jesus because Jesus Christ has asked us yes told us when you pray you know you ought to ask in my name you know uh, can we turn to John chapter 14 verse 13 and 14 and i will do whatever you ask in my name it says and i will do whatever you ask in my name so that the son may bring glory to the father so that the son may bring glory to the father you may ask me for anything in my name you may ask me for anything in my name and i will do it and i will do it i mean see this is the promise of the lord jesus christ you know he himself says that you may ask me for anything and i will do it this is a blessed promise that we have as children of god and that is why we do not have to worry about anything amen and second when we pray it's important that we pray by faith When we read Hebrews chapter eleven verse six, it says, "For without faith, it is impossible to please God." Yeah. See, you have to understand this. Faith is the substance that connects us with God. Amen. So, can you read that verse? And without faith, it is impossible to please God, mm-hmm. because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Amen. So, see, those who come to Him must. believe and he rewards those who earnestly seek him amen and then 
Third, whenever you pray, you know, always pray according to God's will. And how do you know God's will? You know, when we read Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, brethren, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, which is holy, acceptable, and pleasing to God. And then, do not be confined to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. And then you will know what is His perfect will. Good, pleasing, and perfect will is. So, once your mind is renewed, by the Holy Spirit, you will know what is the will of God. You will no longer, uh, you know, be be uh, in in two boats. You know, you will no longer be in a dilemma if it is God's will or if it is not God's will. If our, when our minds are renewed, we will know what is God's perfect, pleasing, and holy will. Yeah. So whenever you pray, ask according to God's will. When we read Matthew chapter six, verse ten. Uh, you know, Jesus Christ, he showed us a pattern of to pray. And in that verse, it says, we pray, God, let your kingdom come and your will be done uh, as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Which means we are to pray to God, Lord, let your will be done in my life. You know, let me align myself to your purpose and plan for my life. Yeah, and when we read, you know, First John chapter five verse fourteen. Can you please read it for me? First John chapter five verse fourteen. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Amen. So see, you know, the the scripture says, you know, this is the confidence that we have as children of God. So if we ask anything, you know, according to His will, He will do do it for us, and that is the heavenly Father. And now you see, uh, how do we pray in God's will? Yeah. So first we have to know that when we pray, it's important that we pray with a pure heart. Yeah. We have to pray in purity. We have to pray with a pure heart and we have to pray in purity. So before you pray, you know, let me tell you, when we read in Mark chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. And when you stand pray. If you hold anything against anyone. See, it says, if you hold anything against anyone. Forgive him. Forgive him. So that your Father in heaven may forgive you. Yourself. So that your Father in heaven will may forgive you. Amen. Amen. So see, before going and approaching our Heavenly Father, it's important that you ought to forgive one another in the love of Christ. If you hold up some grievances, you know, your prayers will not be answered. You know, if your prayer has to be answered, Heavenly Father has to forgive you. If Heavenly Father has to forgive you, you have to forgive one another. Amen. And then, second, we have to pray in purity. It's important. You know, holiness is very essential factor in a Christian life. The scripture says, without holiness, we cannot see God. You know, without holiness, we cannot see God. You know, we read Psalms chapter 66 verse 18. <coughs> Can you please read it for me? If I had cherished sin in my heart, <coughs> the Lord would not have listened. Mm -hmm. It says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So if there is some sin in our heart, our Heavenly Father will not be able to hear our prayers, to listen to it. It becomes an obstacle. It becomes an hindrance. So before we uh, go and submit our petitions, at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's important that we go with a pure heart and we go blameless. You know, we go without any sin in the presence of God. And this sin, you know, how you know we cannot do anything to be sinless. You know, if we are to be sinless, it's important that we confess our sins. So when we confess our sins, you know, our Heavenly Father, He forgives us and He cleanses us, you know, of all infirmities. Yeah. And it's only the blood of Jesus Christ can make us sinless. Yeah. And then when we pray, you know, prayer opens the gates of heaven. It shakes the hell. And then we receive uh, the answers to our prayers by the grace of God. Yeah. Remember, when you pray, it opens the gates of heaven. Your prayers are powerful. Amen. Our prayer has got power. Prayers can work miracles and wonders in Jesus' name. So long, you know, you have to ask Holy Spirit to teach you how to pray. Yeah. And when we pray, remember, it's our duty to pray. And it's God's duty, duty to 
answer our prayers and he and he always answers it in his due time in his time when we read ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 there is a time for everything mm -hmm. and a season for every activity under heaven mm -hmm. so it says there is a time for everything and when we read further you know the scripture says that we serve a god who makes all things beautiful in his time the child of god let me tell you maybe for a very long time you are praying about something you know you are praying and you are at the period of waiting but remember we serve a god who works you know who does everything beautiful in his time you know i want you to turn to first peter chapter 5 verse 6 Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Mm -hmm. So see during the period of uh, waiting you will have to go through a period of uh, affliction, a period of de uh, depression, a period of loneliness. Uh, you know you might feel that everything has come to an end. All that you would see ahead is darkness. But the scripture says humble yourself in the hand of God, in the mighty hand of God, and He will lift you up in His due time. He will lift you up in due time. See, let me emphasize on this word, due time. You know, when a mother conceives, she goes to hospital and then the doctor, you know, gives her a due time when the fetus would come, you know, out. So, when her labor would be. So, this mother had have to wait this nine long months for that due time. It is the same, you know, that due time, God knows exactly, you know, when, where and how he should work in your life for his glory. You know, but he will work it in his due time. We are to humble ourselves. Yeah, we are to humble ourselves and give ourselves unto God's mighty hand. Amen. Because God will bring it to pass. Sometimes it might take time, but we serve a God who is faithful. Yeah. See now, when you, this waiting period, it shows your trust in God. And there is always a test for this trust or this faith. There is always a test for this trust. Remember, you know, Abraham had to go through this period of testing. Joseph had to go through this period of testing. Job had to go through this period of testing. But through it all, all of them, you know, they came out victorious. And it's the same with you and me. When we choose to trust God, you know, during this period of trial, let me tell you, dear children of God, that we would come out victorious. Because we serve a mighty God who always leads us into triumphant procession. Amen. Amen. And then, remember, when sometimes God would remain silent. God seemed to be silent, right? And, and you ought to know that it is a period of testing. When we read 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7, can you please read it for me? These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes God remains silent. You know, sometimes we have to go through this testing. It is to prove the genuineness of our faith. I mean, and let me tell you, if you would choose to trust God and depend on Holy Spirit, you would come out so beautiful and so amazing it would be for the glory of God. Amen. And then, you know, a man of God, uh, he once said, sometimes God is silent is uh, because God believes in you. You know, because God has that faith that even if he is silent, you would not deny him. You would still choose to trust him. You would not betray him. And you would not keep aside the word of God. He has that faith in you. And that is why sometimes God remains silent. Now, fourth thing. When you pray, remember, you are in a battle. And the battle does not belong to us. It belongs to God. You know, Daniel, he prayed, when we read in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 1 to 12, you know, we see Daniel was praying for a very long time, but then his prayers were unanswered. He had to wait for a long time. Yeah. And we see that it, his, the answers to his prayers, it was hindered by the prince of Persia. But 
Look at the life of Daniel. Daniel, he chose to trust God and he chose to wait upon God because of which God tells that Daniel was a man who was highly favored in the sight of God. And because he was highly favored, God sent this angel Michael, you know, to fight the power of darkness. And his prayers were answered. Now look here. You see, Daniel was a saint of Old Testament. But you and me, we are the children of the New Testament covenant. The scripture says, for as many as received him, to them he gave the rights to become the children of God. If God could fight for Daniel, Daniel, how much more will God fight for you and me, who are called his own children? Amen. We have a savior who fights for us. And remember, God has given us the power and authority over every power of darkness. And we are already victorious in Christ Jesus. And we are, we are victorious because Lord Jesus Christ has already won the victor's crown. And when he died for you and me on the cross of Calvary, he already defeated Satan. And he is already under our feet. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remember, you are victorious in Christ Jesus. And you are never defeated because the one who is inside of you is greater than the one in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as you wait, as you wait, pray, as you wait upon the Lord, you know, I want to tell you the promise that God has given to each and every one of you listening to me. When we read in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, can you please read it? For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. For the revelation waits an appointed time time it speaks of the end and it will not prove false though it may linger wait for, wait it. for it and it will certainly. certainly come to pass amen so it will certainly come to pass and that is our god because we serve a god of restoration we serve a god of renewal we serve a god of revival and god has promised that he will restore you know, when we read Joel chapter 2 verse 25, it says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locust and the young locust. The great locust and the young locust. The other locusts and the locust swarm. Okay, the other locust and the locust swarm. Amen. So God is telling, I will repay you for whatever you have lost. You know, whether be it your, uh, whether be it your years or finals or whatever it may be god is promising that i will restore amen. Amen. praise the lord he is the god of restoration amen. and fifth when you pray sometimes it delays it's because god loves you amen. Amen. god loves you you know when we look at the uh, at the life of mary martha and lazarus yeah lazarus you know, Jesus Christ loved them so dearly. And uh, the historians, the theologians, they say that uh, Mary, Martha and Lazarus, they were orphans. They didn't have anybody as their own. You know, they went through a phase of rejection, through a phase of loneliness, through a phase of affliction. And there were nobody for them to call as their own and that is why Lord Jesus Christ he loved them so dearly but then when we, when we read in John chapter 11 we see uh, Lazarus dead you know Lazarus he was the only brother for Mary and Martha you know to whom they could you know cling on to but now we see a scenario where they have lost their brother Message was sent, you know, to Jesus Christ. Message was sent to Jesus Christ that you, Lazarus, whom you love, is dead. But you see, Jesus Christ did not go instantly. You know, he did not go all of a sudden. He went on the fourth day. He went on the fourth day. He loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, but still he went on the fourth day. Now look at the life of Jairus' daughter. When she was dead, Jesus Christ went just like that and brought her back to life you know the widow's son Jesus Christ just raised him back to life 
But now look here, the life of Lazarus whom Jesus Christ loved, he delayed. You know, so he went on the fourth day. You know, and what did Jesus Christ tell to the sisters? If you believe, you shall see the glory of God. The longer the wait, the greater the glory. You know, we ought to understand that, you know, even if it is four days, even if it is dead and decayed, if your situation is dead and decomposed, we have a savior who would come in front of the tomb on the fourth day and would bring back to life every dead situation. And that is our savior. And this is exactly what Jesus Christ did in the life of Lazarus because he loved him. Amen. And Jesus Christ loves you. If there is delay in your issues, if there is delay in your madness, dear child of God, you have to understand that Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. He loves you You're so dear to him. He loves you so dearly. You know, and that is why. See, let me tell you one thing. You might think that your dreams have come to an end. The promises have faded away and there is no future hope for you. Remember, we have a savior who would come on the fourth day in front of the tomb to bring life over every dead situation. Amen. You know, and I want to conclude with a promise. When we read Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, what a blessed promise. See, this is the word of God. It is powerful and it has got life. You know, and it says, since ancient time, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. Now look at this. Who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Amen. So we, we serve a God and we have an almighty, all-powerful God who acts on the behalf of those who wait for him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You shall love God. So do not lose heart. You know, because the scripture says, for those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And we have a God who works on the behalf of his children, those who wait upon him faithfully and prayerfully. Amen. Amen. And by these words, may God bless each one of you. Amen.